I'm Luke, and this is IXO. So when do you think the first electric car was created? Chances are it's a bit earlier than you'd expect. It was created way back in the 1830s. But electric cars weren't really a viable option until 1859 when Gaston Plante invented the rechargeable battery. No one drinks like Gaston. No one thinks like Gaston because he's inventing batteries. I don't know any other parts of that song. Let's talk a bit about how batteries work. Using a chemical reaction, batteries create a flow of electrons from an anode to a cathode. The battery separates these two things with an electrolyte. This means that the electrons must first pass through whatever circuit you create to get to where they want to be. The strength of a battery can be determined based on which materials you use for the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. There are several reasons why a battery might die, but basically it's because the electrons no longer want to go from the anode to the cathode. In a rechargeable battery, a charge can be introduced forcing the electrons from the cathode back to the anode, allowing it to discharge again. The first rechargeable battery clocked in at 2 volts, but by combining several of these batteries together, you can get a 12 volt battery. One of the major downsides to these first batteries was that they discharged fairly quickly, making them only really viable as a backup power supply. In 1881, a huge advancement in battery design was revolutionized. This allowed them to develop a battery similar to what we now see as a 12 volt battery in cars. The first American car utilizing this new design was created in 1890, over a hundred years before the first Prius. It was capable of carrying six people at 14 miles an hour for less than an hour. In the late 1890s, people really started getting into this electric powered craze. A notable example was the seven horsepower hybrid created in 1900 by someone named Porsche. Electric cars had several downsides. When compared with electricity, Gasoline is a much more efficient fuel source, as it creates much more heat per unit. Another downside was that the early electric cars weren't very fast. They can only go around 20 miles an hour. Electric cars were, however, a big improvement over horses and trolleys, as they gave quite a bit more freedom. We saw electric cars become more and more popular in the 1900s. In fact, one third of all cars on the road at the time were electric. Both men and women seemed to like the new car. But soon after that, things started to change. As these cars became more and more popular, certain advertisers like Colonel Albert A. Pope, president of the Pope Manufacturing Company of Hartford, Connecticut, started advertising his cars as the ideal vehicle for women. But why would he think it's the ideal car for women? He thought women had weaker bodies, which means that they were more suited for a weaker car, like the electric car, as opposed to a gasoline-powered car. Also, he must have thought women were not very intelligent since the electric cars were much more reliable and broke down a lot less, requiring the driver to have a lot less technical knowledge. Also, electric cars were much quieter and cleaner, like women of the early 20th century were expected to be. Some of these electric cars even had vanity cases built into them. However, this vehicle sexism went both ways. If electric cars were very feminine, then these combustion cars were super masculine. They were faster, could go long distances, they could even go up hills, but they were a bit less reliable. I've even heard some accounts of men taking women out in their combustion cars hoping that they'll break down, because being able to fix it meant that you were a real cakey dad. Sexism killed the electric car, come on guys, let's raise the bar. That's awful, it's my next single. This idea of sexism in vehicles still exists today. Think about it, the Nissan Leaf doesn't exactly scream pinnacle of manliness. Although a Tesla might be. And also think about how many people think it's super manly to be working under the hood. Women of the early 20th century noticed that they were missing out on quite a bit of opportunities and quite a bit of fun by being pressured into these electric vehicles. Some women wanted to go touring, which is driving long distance, possibly over hills, which electric cars had trouble with. Others simply wanted to drive fast. This feminization of electric cars made men of the time not really want them either. As sales started to decline for the electric car in 1910, advertisers switched back to a gender-neutral ad, hoping that it would increase their sales, but it was too late. 
Sexism was only one of the reasons why electric cars got pushed into the golf cart industry. Another important reason was the discovery of vast oil reserves which drove the price of owning a combustion car way down. Also, the development of better roads allowed people to live further away, meaning that they needed a faster car to get into the city where they worked. Lastly, assembly lines like the ones at Ford were developed, further decreasing the price of owning a combustion car to as low as half of that of an electric car. Fast forward 70 years, just after the energy crisis of the 1980s, along with pollution concerns and the effects from an oil embargo, several car manufacturers began researching new electric cars. By the 1990s, we had the first concepts of modern electric cars. Over the last few years, we've seen the number of electric cars increase by about 25% per year. Modern electric cars and hybrids now have a range that varies from 11 miles or 18 kilometers in the low end to 265 miles or 426 kilometers on the high end, which is some of the Tesla cars. They also range in price from 23,000 to over 135,000 for some of the luxury models. What's interesting now is that many of the innovative ideas that we hear about, such as the network of stations to exchange batteries for electric cars, that's not a new idea. Do you think electric cars are going to become the most popular car one day? Or do you think there's going to be some other fuel type that beats it out? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Luke, and remember, keep learning all the time.